Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lords and Litchfield. Today is the fifth day of Christmas. I don't know if you got five golden rings like the song says, but uh, in any case, we celebrate this uh, feast that goes on for several days, and today's the fifth day. Um, I remember talking to a woman who had recently uh, had a baby, and one of the things she was reflecting on was the two ways that <clears throat> she was present to her daughter. She said, you know, there are times when the whole family's around and everybody's happy and there's just a lot, of, a lot of activity and rejoicing. And then there are times when it's just me and the baby. And that is a special time. It's, they're both special times, but that's a special time when it's just you and the baby. And in some ways, our, our celebration of Christmas is similar. We, we have, after the big hubbub of Christmas Day, we continue to meditate on the reality of Jesus' birth in our midst. Um, not with a lot of to do, but just, just us and Jesus. Um, so let's be aware of Jesus' presence in our midst in all the many quiet ways he comes into our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We turn to the mercy of God, this God who is all, always ready to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Christ Jesus, you came to pour out your life that we might have life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are light in the midst of our darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We praise God and say, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look with serene continence upon us that we may acclaim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word 
the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet, I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. <clears throat> now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Gospel of the Lord.
in a lot of the stories of uh, the birth of Jesus, and you can even find it in a lot of the Christmas carols that we sing, um, as we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, there's always the shadow of the cross that's present. It's kind of hinting at where the life of this Jesus will lead. And today we have this wonderful story of the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Simeon, this person full of hope and patience waiting for the Messiah, finally sees in this baby Jesus the light that has come into the world and he blesses God. But he also is aware that there is a darkness that's going to oppose this light who is Jesus. And he mentions that this child will be a sign that will be contradicted. And he says to Mary, you will have your heart pierced as well. So it's a reminder to us that this Jesus who's born in Bethlehem is destined to pour out his life for us completely on the cross in order to fully conquer the darkness and bring light that darkness cannot put an end to. So we remember that this Jesus is one who comes to offer his entire life for us. And we're called in the first letter of John to reflect this light, this light of Christ, by simply how we love other people. If you remember Linus from the cartoon Peanuts, one of the things he used to say was, I love humanity. It's people I can't stand. Isn't it true? It's always easy to love people in general. It's when you get down to particular people, that's where the challenge is. And yet we're called to be loving as Jesus loved, to love people, not in general, but specifically, to love people who from time to time are not particularly lovable, and to love people who don't always love us back. That is the challenge, but it's not something we do by ourselves. It's something we do because we stand in the light that Jesus brings. So let's be aware of this wonderful self-giving of Jesus that leads him not only into the stable at Bethlehem, but to the cross and beyond the cross into the resurrection. And let's allow that light of Jesus to teach us again and again how to love the way he loves. So let us offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the church. We pray that we may be examples of Jesus' love and light in the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Pope Francis, for all our bishops, that they may be filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are facing difficulty these days, those who have difficulty with depression and anxiety during this holiday time, those who feel alone, those who lack the basic necessities of life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in the world, especially for people in Ukraine and people whose lives are filled with violence and war. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick. We pray for Michael Richardson, for David. We pray for Pope Benedict, who's gravely ill, who's facing his own death, that God may be close to him 
and close to all those who are sick. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died. The Mass today is offered for Owen Nelligan. We also remember all of our loved ones who have gone before us, that they may know the nearness of God in the happiness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold deep in our hearts, let's pause for a moment in silence. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, your son Jesus is a light that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot conquer it. We ask you to receive these prayers for we trust in you and we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Joseph, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained. 
through Christ our Lord. So these days, our gift shop is only open on weekends, beginning, I think, January 7th. Uh, but prime time is still open. They have lots of uh, sales going on if you want to take a look. Uh, and the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you. Have a good day.